Views expressed on the following program did not necessarily match those of WPSL. However, we are the ones that encourage you to like and share them on social media and with all your friends and neighbors because Care Bag Incorporated now presents Careology, usually hosted by Roxy Brown, but tonight a special guest host, the one and only Mighty Mike. Welcome aboard again. <laughs> Thank you very much, Cliff, and uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another great hour. Information, talking, uh, having a, a good conclusion about what this world is all about, and we want to, again, I, I want again to uh, thank uh, Roxy for this opportunity to uh, get back into the driver's seat and do a little uh, radio gig here. Our uh, special co-host, he keeps saying that I'm special, but our other special co-host is uh, Pastor Haynes with the Treasure Coast Church of God, Seventh Day in Port St. Lucie. And uh, Pastor, welcome. Thank you. Thank and you, you are more than welcome. And we are going to talk about something that pastors know nothing about. Absolutely. And that is, <laughs> that is anger. Yeah, it's dealing with it. It's ah. talking about those things that make you angry. How do you deal with it? Uh, what is uh, good solutions? Because I can remember back in the day when uh, I was angry once in my life. Oh, one time I got angry. There's a righteous anger, though. It, it, there? Well, there is. well, absolutely. Okay, there is. But, yeah. okay we're, if, if we're going to get biblical, I got to be careful now. <laughs> but uh, I was angry and then I just stayed angry. Well, well, you know, there are two ways to deal with it. Yeah. You can deal with it in a positive way or you can deal with it in a negative way. Well, I did the negative way for quite a while uh -huh. until it was revealed to me that that wasn't the route to go. Oh. Be positive about your anger, not negative Absolutely. about it. And uh, it was when I was just a kid. But uh, we'll get to that in just a moment. But we want to say thank you to Careology mm -hmm. and uh, Roxy. Good evening to you. How you doing? You know there? she's listening in. Of course she is. Yes, she is. from wherever on the planet she happens to be. I don't know where she is this time. She but gets wherever around. She's, wherever she is, she's out making it life a lot better for a lot of people. For somebody. Right? We, we want to thank our sponsors tonight. We want to say thank you to Treasure Coast Lexus. Also, Design a Sign Toyota. Uh, two men in a truck. Also, saying thank you to uh, Got Blinds, Need Windows, and Groza. And we also say thank you to All Roads Truck Repair and Kicking It United. Thank you very much for your sponsorship. We appreciate all of you. Uh, say good evening to uh, Junior Brown. Thank you, Junior. Appreciate you for, for watching. Hey, Junior. Uh, how are you? Now, before <laughs> we get into our subject matter, we want to kind of interview a little bit uh, sure. my uh, special co-host here. Now, how long have you been a pastor? Uh, roughly 25 years. Uh, what made you, uh, well, I can understand the inspiration to it, but uh, what, what got you into? Um, I've, I've always been uh, interested in serving. Mm -hmm. So serving has always been something I like to do. Uh, and so uh, for me, being a pastor is being mm -hmm. a servant. Now, is it true that being a pastor, you see just about everything? Uh, you Every... don't see everything, you hear about okay. everything. Okay, <laughs> the different scenarios, because talking about anger and things like that, absolutely, that, that's something yeah. you've had to uh, yes, talk have, with a lot of people. We've about. had to deal with that, and uh, we have to guide people through it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's obviously one of the many things pastors do in serving their, their congregation. And, and Careology, uh, from my estimation and listening, I've been here a few times and uh, hanging out with Roxy. It, it's a science of helping to take care of people whether they can take care of themselves or you're there to help them. I think that one of the missing pieces lately, Cliff and I was talking about it before we got on the air, is how people just don't like people anymore. They want to be separate. But I think that's why this topic is so important for us to be mm -hmm. having a discussion about, because it seems like people are just losing it everywhere. I mean, you listen to the news lately, and, and, and I know, we all know that anger is part of the human experience yes. we you know we all we all at some point in time experience that uh whether it is because of of disappointments or different things happen in life and so it's it's normal and natural to become angry sometimes the problem is what we see is happening mm -hmm. lately is that people are taking it to an extreme, extreme. negative uh, solution, which in so many cases, it's putting not just people who are victims of someone's anger, but the person himself or herself who is angry mm -hmm. gets into a very bad place and maybe uh, regret for the rest of their lives. It's, it's just a terrible thing to be in. 
and and you were you were talking about lately i mean when we talk about what anger can do for somebody mm -hmm. or do to somebody and we all we gotta do is turn on the news absolutely and we mm -hmm. see all these different things that are that are happening out in the the different parts of the united states even across the world how a simple thing you may just step on someone's tennis shoe you don't even have to step on the tennis shoe <laughs> yeah. you, you listen to some of the things that are yeah. happening lately yeah you just didn't give them enough packages of ketchup in the in the pickup window the guy and, and was mad gone. because they put too much mayo absolutely on yeah. his sandwich and he just went off yes but yes. see what what happens and i'm you know, I'm not the expert or anything. I do have a degree in psychology, but I threw that away because I got into radio and all of that. But the thing is, is that these things are not just instantaneous. These are things that happen to people for a while. They are built up. And then all of a sudden you say the key word or you, you, you push or you look at somebody wrong. There's and, a trigger. Oh, my goodness. There's and, a trigger. And these it's... stories that are coming out yeah. and the, 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 the killings yeah. at these schools and where people are just losing their life over and, and you know things. anger has always been here it's mm -hmm. it's part of who we are it's right. a, it's an emotion that we all at some point uh go through but it's the the frequency of the the, the way people are reacting when they become angry mm -hmm. that is what is of great concern to me and i think to many people in our communities uh, it it puts you to the place where you're almost not that you're afraid to get out of your house, but, <laughs> but you're not sure what's going to happen when you get out. You're a, whole, uh, who, you're a lot who, more who cautious. You're going to be driving beside right. because we hear of all these road rage incidences where uh, for no reason at all, people are being shot and killed. This is uh, WPSL Digital 1590 AM. My name is Marty Michael, along with our good friend, uh, Pastor Haynes. And we're sitting in for Roxy tonight. Not that it, it's going to take a whole lot more people than us to sit in for Roxy. But uh, Roxy, whatever you're doing, dear, thank you very much. A lot of shoes it. to fill, big yeah. shoes to fill. Yeah, yeah, Roxy is a busy, busy person. Uh, tonight we're talking about anger and how to deal with that. I'm sure that uh, when you're counseling uh, people from your uh, situation, uh, they may say to you that I'm angry because... Uh, of whatever the reason is. It may be a simplistic reason that they say, but it might mean really mean something to them, something small, they, maybe and, and really mean something. And to that's them. one of the things counselors want to know mm -hmm. when, when they're counseling with someone who's angry. Why are you angry? What's, what's getting you to that point? There is something there. Are you being honest with yourself? Hmm. Do you know exactly why you are angry or is it something you, you are hiding? And how long have you been hiding this? And, and so a lot of it is is not just anger. It's mm -hmm. pent up over right. a long period, period of time. time. Something, something, something's been happening to them. And, and it could happen to anybody. Well, back when I was a kid, they always showed you pictures. This is the picture of a criminal. This is the picture of this person in this situation. But anybody could be angry at any time for, for any reason. And that is why... Like you said, leaving the house, you got to be cautious, very yeah. cautious. Go where you're supposed to go. <laughs> exactly. Turn around, come C back. Come right back. Because yeah. it only it only takes just just a moment. Yeah, you have no idea who's driving the car right next to you, mm. or or who's walking into the supermarket at the same time. You just think about it. It's not safe in churches, in schools, in supermarkets, in business places, mm -hmm. in your workplace. Used to be havens. Uh, Used to be a haven. Don't, yeah, you don't yeah. go there. Yeah, yeah. Now, Some places you respected. That's not happening anymore. Mm -hmm. People are um, not happy. And I'm not saying everybody, but that comes from unhappiness, uh, unfulfilled expectations. It comes from a lot of different things. Uh, two parts to it the actual you're unhappy about something and then a person's reaction, mm -hmm. what they do that exemplifies their unhappiness. I'm mad because you're going through a divorce or my kids aren't doing what they're supposed to do. I lost the job, got fired. And the next thing you know, you're on the news. Absolutely. From and, someone. And, and there's so many things, unfortunately, uh, that just, just trips people up. Mm -hmm. the, the triggers are everywhere and you have no idea what that trigger is. 
it, somebody just looked at you in a certain way and, and that just triggers some kind of negative reaction from you. The, the, the unfortunate thing is people are resorting to violence wow. when they're angry. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's one of the things that, that is very disturbing. Uh, in our communities everywhere, we are seeing it. We are hearing about it. Uh, we are hearing about families that are being destroyed with parents killing children and children killing parents. This is very, very disturbing and very concerning to many people. Um, when, when a mother can kill her child or her children, that's th that's unheard of. This is not things that just happen. Right. You know, th there's something behind it, and that's why we want to figure out what's causing it and what can we do to help. There is, and, and I don't want to really delve into this uh, situation, circumstance, talking about separation of church and state and things mm -hmm. like that. But sure. uh, the, the government uh, has all kinds of programs and policies that, you know, come and see us and we can help you with whatever your difficulties are. And then the, the church is saying that, well, it may be of a spiritual nature. So let, let, let's deal with that too. Mm -hmm. But the combination of having people tell you what to do, when to do, uh, when to do it, and then you didn't do it good enough. Mm -hmm. And then to not be able to help them to realize that and then to move out of that into something that's a little more productive, that's, that's a tough thing to do. Yeah, I, I think churches, uh, pastors, counselors in mm -hmm. churches are aware that anger is not just a physical issue it yes, could sir. be also spiritual but it can also be psychological there, there could be a number of reasons and some some of it comes from mental illnesses and so it's it's a broad range of of issues that can bring about anger uh, to where uh, one uh, reacts violently and cause damage to others and to themselves so uh, this is not just a spiritual problem mm even though I'm so glad you said even that. though it has its base, you know, in yeah. in, in the thoughts mm -hmm. in the thinking in, in the inner person. But it's not just a spiritual problem. But and, and again, I, I wasn't anticipating turning this into a church service. of any kind. <laughs> But I mean, you are a pastor. Uh, sure. And you are you have a responsibility to to your people. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been uh, on radio for the last 40, almost 45 years. Wow. Uh, I've worked in the community. I have, like I said, I taught school for a, a long period of time. And what was scary to me is I saw the progression of how because when, when we were kids, you know, I'm, I'm gonna see you after school, right? And the first person threw a punch, maybe one, and then they became and friends. Then everything, and went, <laughs> everything was fine. Canceled out. But yes. not now. No. They've gone from that to I'm not only going to shoot you, I'm going to shoot anybody that knows you. Mm -hmm. And then while I'm at it, I'm going to shoot a few of the people that I was mad at the day before. And then they turn around and they, they kill themselves. And, and I often wonder, why, why don't they just first kill themselves and then think about somebody else? Well, mm -hmm. of course, that would solve the whole problem. Right. But, well, they, uh, they, but they want some satisfaction, yeah. I guess. But it, it makes for a tough scenario to deal with, because if everybody, you know, like I'm just meeting you. Sure. I can't tell anything about you. Mm -hmm. So what happens if I just happen to bump you on my way out the door and you have had one of the toughest days you had in your life? And, and that's where we're living on the precipice. And we, we, we haven't pulled back from it. Absolutely. And with, with our kids and with, uh, with relationships with our parents and, and you can name any place in this world. It used to be that, that phrase, Cliff. Remember that phrase, people going postal? Right. And mm -hmm. we used to just talk about the post office. Right. And we were just, right. oh my goodness, you hear what happened at the post office here? Now going postal, that's just a misnomer it's, now. It's, it's just people it's anywhere who are who are unsatisfied with their with their circumstance. Uh, again, this is uh, WPSL fifteen ninety uh, AM. My name is Marty Michael, along with uh, Pastor Haynes, and he is uh, with the. Hope I get this right now. Yeah. <laughs> Treasure Coast Church of God Seventh Day Port St. Lucie. Uh, 
what uh, service times are when? At 10, 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. But uh, we're here talking on Careology. Roxy is uh, giving us the privilege of using the microphones tonight. And we're talking on Careology about anger and things that make you angry, how to deal with these uh, incredible circumstances, because all you got to do now is turn on the TV, look on your phone, uh, pick up a newspaper, and you'll see the results of, of, of a lot of anger. Uh, how to carry that, how to deal with that uh, seems to, well, we haven't gotten the playbook on that yet because well, it's everywhere. Well, you know, I often wonder, uh, did, did the pandemic have anything to do with, with the reactions we're getting from people today? Does that have, I mean, we haven't studied COVID-19 long enough right. to understand its long lasting effects on right. people. And, and, and there's a lot of people who've had COVID, say, a year ago, and they're now beginning to feel the effects of it. Well, I think uh, in COVID bodies. brought a whole nother way of living. Right. And of course, there are some people who don't like change at all. Something changes, then I'm just, uh, I'm just going crazy because I know I, I don't I want things to stay the same. A lot of pressure. And then it just almost split it down the middle. Wearing a mask. Don't wear a mask. Mm -hmm. Get vaccinated don't get vaccinated. And with the pressure of the media, push, 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 push. And then the politics got involved in it. And then that just created a circumstance where people were, were, were becoming desperate. And, and there's a lot of people who were just put out of their comfort zones. Right. And that created a big problem for them. But, but of course, we can't blame everything on COVID-19, right? right? right. Uh, because anger was there before COVID. Long, long before COVID. Long before I, COVID. I just know I'm not drinking any bleach. I know that much. Um, but yeah. but how to deal with 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 the circumstances? Because we've had I've had pressure all my life for one reason or another. You know, playing basketball, being in school. Uh, uh, I have four older brothers. They were all all American football players and basketball players and stuff. And here I come along. You've been and, on radio too. That's pressure yeah, in that. <laughs> and there's pressure in, in radio. I can't tell you how many speech classes I tried to dodge, but I still wound up in it. In it also. And you, as a pastor, there's pressure because people look at you in, in a certain way. And if you move to the right and you were supposed to move to the left so we build this pressure on the, one another the expectations are, are extremely high and, you're, you're and you and you still keep coming and, back and, for more and you try to do this as much as possible yeah um hmm. and yeah it, it could be very difficult and so you could imagine a lot of people are going through this mm -hmm. uh so the point that we want to drive up um at today is how do we deal with it whether it's in ourselves or in somebody else whom we know, whom we love, mm -hmm. whom we have relationship with. That's, that's the question. And I think this is what we want to bring to the, to the public, to the community, that there are ways to deal with it. It doesn't have to end up in somebody getting wow. hurt, somebody getting killed, somebody going to jail, uh, somebody being arrested, somebody being shot down. It doesn't have to end that way just because you got angry. Uh, there, there's got to be ways that we can deal with it. And sometimes in, in the community or in the home, we know someone is angry. Right. And we just let them do. We, we, we don't know how to deal with it. Well, I, I would think that, and, and going, having gone to school, got my little degree and everything, I was so proud, graduated with a degree in psychology, I didn't know what I was going to do with it, because back when I graduated from college, it was rare that you would have a black psychologist. Well, you're doing a lot you of know. psychological stuff here on right. radio, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> and so I was told I would best serve my community, this is what I was told, graduated from high school in 1969, to be a janitor, Uh huh. be a janitor. Maintenance, uh, sanitation engineer, you'll do well. Now, if, you, if your site's a little higher, and even in that, the expectations and, and, and how to deal with it. I, I was fortunate to have a very loving mother. I mean, that's the name of my little company, Hi Mom Productions, because she, she hung in there with us. She had six kids after my father passed away. Uh, the expectations were high, but they were manageable. And what many times... I want you to be good. I'm not going to tell you how to be good. Mm -hmm. I just want you to be good. And they walk off. And when you're not good, here they come back with the broom or whatever. And, and, and then there's that manual labor on you. Uh, but that, that'll be good. We're going to, uh, can we take a break, uh, sure. Cliff? And when we come back, and uh, we are going to talk about 
those things that we think uh, are going to be helpful, especially in the community in which we serve. Solution-based discussion? Yes, Who absolutely. would have ever thought of that? <laughs> wow. Brand new. Okay. You're listening to Careology. We'll be right back. two men in a truck of the treasure coast you want to move your business without moving a single meeting you want it handled with no fuss lots of stuff no time to move it you need the pros that care that's why you call two men in a truck of the treasure coast family owned and operated franchise call 772-236-0827 772-236-0827. Movers who care. Visit two men in a truck, treasurecoast.com. If you could reimagine the way you buy a car, what would you do? Make it simple, make negotiations disappear, demand transparency, then experience amazing at your Treasure Coast Lexus dealer. Car buying simplified. Treasure Coast Lexus is a proud sponsor of Carology. Every Tuesday at 6.05 p.m., caring and supporting for our community. Car buying simplified. Check out your Treasure Coast Lexus dealer. Kicking It United is back again August 1st at the Mid-Florida Event Center. We are going to show love to the boys and girls in St. Lucie County. We're offering free haircuts, free braids, and we're hoping to fill 500 book bags for back to school. If you're interested as a business to have a box in your place, or you'd like to go ahead and donate, please call us at 772-222-7399. Again, the number is 772-222-7399. Thank you, and we appreciate your help. Love from Carebag. Why call two men in a truck of the Treasure Coast? You want to move your business without moving a single meeting? You want it handled with no fuss. Lots of stuff, no time to move it. You need the pros that care. That's why you call two men in a truck of the Treasure Coast. Family owned and operated franchise. Call 772-236-0827. 772-236-0827. Movers who care. Visit two men in a truck, treasurecoast.com. This is WPSL Fort St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. We now return to the science of caring, careology. Once again, here is your guest host for the night, Mighty Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Cliff. Good did evening, I, everyone. And did I say that right? Yes, you did. Okay. Yes, you did. I, I, be careful. I threw a little something in your extra little paycheck. Oh, um, oh, I don't want to give you the oh, Mighty <laughs> Mike. I need a little more echo. Okay. Uh, well, next time. Let me roll a reel to reel and give it a little <laughs> volume. You know. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Roxy. What a great pleasure to us. Uh, this time with you this evening until seven o'clock. This is Careology, and it talks about the science and the development of how to care for one another. My the other special guest host tonight is uh, Pastor Haynes, and he's with the Treasure Coast Church of God uh, seventh and the day. Seventh Day in Port St. Lucie. And the, you have a great event that's coming up that's going to be at your church, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Mm -hmm. We're talking about one word tonight. That one word is anger. And we've been talking about the things that happen. We've been talking about how anger has made its way into our society. And now we're going to talk about what, how is it that we're going to be able to deal with anger and the, the, not just, oh, I'm not happy with something. Here in the, I'll just say United States, for example, when someone's angry, most people are going to get their keys. Mm -hmm. They're going to get out of the, whatever that building is. They're getting out of they're there because of, yeah. anger is at a whole nother level now. And, and because of everything that's happened lately, yes, sir. somebody gets angry on the job, you clear the building. Mm -hmm. you, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, you clear the building. If someone comes to you, I'm just using you for an example, mm -hmm. comes to you and you're, you're the pastor and they're saying that I'm, I'm angry. And you can tell that they're not just, you know, they don't, not that they're disturbed or anything, but they're just angry. What are, what's one of the first things that you do? My, well, my, my first question would be, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. uh, because that's my, that's my place. That's mm -hmm. what I do. I help people. So 
how can I help you? Um, and so, of course, we will hopefully go into a quiet place and talk about it. Uh, we, we don't want to be yelling and shouting because that's one of the things that's going to, it could be the trigger yeah, to it. do something right. really wrong. So it's really important to uh, be able to control the situation rather than let the situation control you. Yeah, because I, we Florida is known for road rage. That's where this whole thing started about that phrase. Road rage is right here in, in Florida where people, you know, cutting each other off on the road and stepping in front of folks and things like that. But when we talk about these triggers, a, a trigger is for everything now. Um, where you were able to say, well, I understand your situation, but when you have 122,000 triggers to deal with mm -hmm. and the pressure, we talked a bit about the uh, COVID and about what's going on in our world, uh, having that calming influence on someone just to let them know that uh, I'm not the enemy. Right. Uh, can we talk about this thing? And somebody comes to you as a pastor, mm -hmm. they're expecting some kind of of counsel that is different from mm -hmm. just going to uh, a psychologist or uh, or anything like that a therapist right. they're expecting something on the religious plane so maybe asking the person let's pray about this for a minute first let's let's pray about it so we can have calm and then we can delve into the real problem I think a lot of people love to be prayed for. That's mm -hmm. that's an important well, aspect. And, and that's you're caring for that person. Absolutely. You know, of course there's, you know, people, you know, I don't believe in God and all that, but but just showing that you care for somebody just on the outset. Absolutely. Just to say, well, we can we can talk about this and and then go ahead. You you talk first. And Pray, I will listen. Prayer has a calming influence yes, on sir. people. Yeah. Uh, especially if you if you're up to it, if if you don't care about it, then it may not have any influence on you. But if you care about it and you're prayed for, you feel better about yourself. Mm -hmm. th th there's something to it. It's spiritual. It's not just it's not just a calming thing, but it's a spiritual thing. Making making that connection with, with someone. Yes. Uh, now you taught school, and you did, too. and I taught school. <laughs> yeah. Cliff, did you uh, teach school? Well, I, I was the puppet guy. I'd appear in classrooms from time to time. Yeah. <laughs> You're the one they had the teacher conferences about. Mr. Right? Mullet and Stranger Danger, those <laughs> those those ones you probably remember back in those days. Every St. Lucie mm -hmm. County schoolroom, elementary school, every one of them. We did the Stranger Alert program with the News Tribune. Mm -hmm. Remember the mullet rapper yes, they called it? Yes. Mm -hmm. They created a uh and I and I built the costume, Mr. Mullet, and Stranger Danger was the bad guy. He'd try to lure the fishy with a lure mm -hmm. to try to lure him in to catch him you know okay and that what he taught kids was uh you know the stranger alert program is what we called it then we found out that most of the kids that are abused in that manner are usually abused by somebody they know they know uh, yeah yep trust you know? the people that you know yeah. you know and, yeah. uh, and you can't you, you gotta don't trust the people that want to touch you mm -hmm. and uh you know sometimes the people just too much hands-on a lot of folks need to keep their hands to themselves. Now, I'm not talking about when someone needs a hug. That's that's another thing. That'll lower blood pressure right there. Yes. But uh, the in, human touch, in studying all that, the human touch mm -hmm. has medicinal properties. To Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if done properly, if done right. But in, in this day and age, okay, touch me, don't touch me. You're harassing me, but I want, don't go too far. I want you to say, we, we, we've got so many signals that are going on oh, yeah. and it's hard to, concentrate on that that one or two yeah. things that was going to help the situation when someone comes to you angry comes to me comes to cliff angry you you want to try to divest them of all the that that anger uh you're you're gonna have to be as calm as you possibly can even when your heart is way out here out of your chest you you're going to have to be able to be in that situation and not let that that situation take over absolutely yeah so so one of the things that um that I would say mm -hmm. is there's got to be an admission that there is a problem. Uh, wow. You know, you can't fix something that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And there, there are people who are running around with anger, but never acknowledge that there is anger. And, and so you can't, you, you really can't fix it. Mm -hmm. If somebody comes to you and acknowledges first that 
I am angry about something. And they may say, I don't even know why I'm angry, but I am angry. At least there is, there is an admission right mm-hmm. here. And then you can work on something that's already acknowledged. Uh, the, the danger is the people who have anger and do not acknowledge it. And even in the family, and if, if some family member says, why are you angry? I'm not angry. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the first reaction is, I'm not angry. Right. And if you try to persist. And say, well, and, you. Yeah, yeah. And, and then they get angry now. And then. Now things, you know they're things, really angry. Now things get out of control. So uh, the first rule is to admit that there is anger. That mm-hmm. there's something that bothers you. There is something, could be one day old, could be a one year old, could mm-hmm. be 10 years old. There is something that's been bothering you and it's, it's there and it's not going away. And it's, it's for some reason, it hasn't been dealt with. And because it hasn't been dealt with, it's there. Well, a lot of people don't want to, and, and not argue with you, I'm agreeing with you. A lot of people don't want to talk about themselves. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, yeah, I might be angry, but I don't want to talk about myself. I want to, I want to talk about you. And if you ask me too many questions, it may confuse them or heighten the situation. Uh, people, they feel like opening up is a weakness. Mm-hmm. Little boys are told to not to cry, to right. be strong and, 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 you know, and virile and only girls cry. And, and uh, you can't, you know, let that emotion come out because then you're less of a man. Our society teaches. Now we have things. to watch our pronouns. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh. That's, a, yeah. that's another big Them issue. There, oh. he, she, they, all of that. So these, these triggers that are constantly, being pushed at our kids, being pushed at families. The family unit is different now. The whole work environment is is different. Churches are different. Uh, The whole thing with the acceptability of the police department is different, going into the military. Everything is different. But having someone that can at least sit and listen to you, Mm -hmm. good old-fashioned, let's just sit on the porch here and talk for just a moment. Uh, Amen. Uh, Mm -hmm. Accepting uh, that there is a problem and accepting the responsibility okay your reaction was not the greatest reaction but that's not something that we need to harp on we just want to make sure first of all are are you calm do you know that whatever it is that was done you take the responsibility for it and then you can move from there but uh, there are so many things that are going on with our kids going on with uh, people who were in their right mind yesterday Mm -hmm. but today so we're talking today on uh, WPSL, uh, Digital 1590 AM. Uh, this is Careology. My name is Mike. This is Pastor Haynes. And we're talking about anger. Uh, give us a, another uh, point that we can pursue how to deal with, the, with anger. Well, I would say if, if you know someone is angry, mm-hmm. you want to encourage the person to seek professional help. Uh, uh, might make find, mad. Find, find find a counselor. Find mm-hmm. someone whom you can uh, whom you can confide in. A, a pastor, um, a teacher, someone whom you know in the community who people look up to, mm-hmm. and um, see if you can get that person to talk with that with with such a person. I think a lot of the times we know things in the community but we don't talk about it. Right. And because we don't talk about it, we, we suffer for it. Uh, we're affected by it. Uh, it. It visits us in our own homes, mm-hmm. on our streets, in our neighborhoods, because we don't talk about it. We, 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 we like to keep silent about the things we know. And of course, you're not talking it to strangers, but if you know someone who is carrying this heavy burden of anger, then maybe talk to them about seeking help because they obviously have not been able to deal with it themselves. Right. So they need to find help somewhere where, where it can be dealt with. And, and I've, I've read that, that, that there's a stigma that is, if you are, like I said, if you're going to see a psychiatrist or you admit to your shortcomings that mm-hmm. you, you're not viewed as a person who is, has it all together. Right, you're not strong. So they not... would rather see you lose it <laughs> rather than but the thing is when you lose it there's an explosion yes sir. and and the, there's there's so much casualties around mm-hmm. that explosion 
And unfortunately, that's what's happening. When you let it continue to build up like blowing up a balloon, mm -hmm. you keep blowing it up bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And what's well, going to happen eventually? It's going to uh, pop, kapowie, yeah. because it just can't take anymore. Yeah, and each one of us has capacity for caring and love and yeah. understanding. But many Turn times, yeah, <laughs> many, many times we don't, we don't want to share that. E even if I'm coming to you and talking to you, mm -hmm. I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to say lower my standards. I don't want to be the person that's the soft person either, mm -hmm. because I can remember uh, seeing fathers dealing with their son who it was in a bad situation. They'd be, instead of being soft with them, they were hard with them. And like I said, boys don't cry. You're, you're being a, 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 a wussy person and you know, all these kind of things. And knowing that if just a couple kind words, would really make would a fix the make problem. A difference, yeah. It would fix the problem. Yeah. yeah. And, and and it's important that we don't rush into ra uh, rash judgments right. on people who are angry. Um, we, we may be thinking that they are angry for one reason, but it's really something very, very, very different. Um, yeah. So be careful not to make, make any judgments on right. them early. Mm -hmm. um, you do not suggest in any way that you know why they're angry let them tell you why mm -hmm. they're angry i think you'll get to a better place that so way. i don't tell them i understand i understand and then walk off and leave them st okay right yeah okay. Mm -hmm. uh and, and again we're not turning this into a sermon but i got the pastor right here mm -hmm. but the bible does say that we're supposed to be uh quick to listen and, and slow, slow to, to speak, speak. Uh, and and how how many lives and and really nowadays how many lives can be saved if someone was very slow to speak and quick to, to listen, listen to somebody just listen to their difficulty their problem no matter how weird or how unusual most of them. it may be yeah that would save most of them just 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 have a talk just take yeah take some time there Bring is this this idea of take a deep breath mm -hmm. and count to 10. Yeah. that's that short space of time makes a difference makes a big difference once once you realize that trigger is present take a deep breath take your time settle down count to 10 think about the consequences mm -hmm. the thing with anger is it it um it is kind of um it 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 messes up the mind when you when you become angry you become cognitively dysfunctional because you do not see things the way they really are. Right. Be all you can see is what you're feeling, what, what you're experiencing in yourself, and you're not looking at the real situation that is before you. So your cognition is affected by, by that, and therefore your reaction is going to be in a negative way. So it's really important to take those few seconds of time. Mm -hmm. That's going to make a world of difference when that trigger is there. We've talked about uh, solutions. One was uh, admitting to a difficulty or problem, taking responsibility, and others seeking professional help. Uh, and, when... and, and professional help could mean someone who, who you have the confidence can deal with it not mm -hmm. necessarily some guy who has a certificate somewhere <laughs> on his on, on his the wall of course those yeah. guys are good to have around mm -hmm. <laughs> so if we if we're looking at solutions other solutions uh but let's talk let's talk about the physical part to it you know uh one of the things that that makes me feel good that is is getting some exercise getting on my bike riding uh Walk going out to the beach and the splash of the ocean and absolutely. all those kind of things. Absolutely. Uh, changing my environment. Uh, you, you agree with something? Uh, like absolutely. That? I've got it listed right here. It's right here. Um, uh, where, where do I have it? I know I have it somewhere. Um, uh, I got it written down somewhere. Make lifestyle changes like mm -hmm. exercise, diet. Yeah. Uh, change your social circles if you can. I can't stick with the same yeah. friends that made me mad, but <laughs> the only well, we I just can... have a wonderful time being angry together. <laughs> yeah, all together. <laughs> we're just mad. Yeah. Uh, a, a change. Y yes, you need to make some changes in your life. Well, you're asking a changes. lot. It took me it, 10 years to get these it's friends. It's hard to do that, but yeah. you'll realize if you can do it. And I think we all 
uh, who has had some measure of success in life right. realized that it didn't come without changes. Right. And some of those changes were really important to get us from where we were mm -hmm. to where we are, or at least where we came to at the mm -hmm. moment of our success. So um, anger is the same thing. It's, it's an emotion that we all experience sometimes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes our social circles uh, are the triggers for our anger. Um, they could be our friends, our mm -hmm. family, our whoever, but that's where the trigger is. Again, we don't know. It could be on family relationships. It right. could be on friendships. could be uh, disappointments of the past. It could be a number of things that becomes the trigger. It could just be the way somebody talked to you when you were maybe 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Someone talked to you a certain way and, and it just didn't go well with you. And every time somebody talks to you that way, that same you, way yeah. that's, that's the trigger. It's, it's, it, it boils up within you. And, and if you don't know how to control yourself, if you can't take those 10 seconds to think about where you are, uh, you can be in a lot of trouble in 10 seconds. And you carry this stuff with you for a lifetime. You do. Right. Yeah. This is Mike, and uh, we're, we're sitting in for our good friend Roxy on uh, WPSL. You know she's listening. I know she is. I know <laughs> she is. Uh, 1590 AM digital, 1590. And uh, my name is Mike, and it's a pleasure to uh, sit in for Roxy whenever. Now, coming up in next month, I'm going to be here for four Tuesdays in a row, Cliff. I don't four know. Four Tuesdays. Four in a row. Tuesdays in a row. I don't know if you can I, handle. I that. can handle that. That's a lot of a lot of pressure. I love working with other radio. <laughs> Roxy people. is going to be out on vacation. Is that what it is? I can't. I can't tell you. Can't divulge that information. <laughs> ah, it's going to be in a secret. Secret. <laughs> That's right. An undisclosed place. location. Yeah. Undisclosed yeah. location. Undisclosed. <laughs> and uh, we're with Pastor Haynes from the Treasure Coast uh, Treasure Coast Church, Church of God Seventh, Seventh Day, Day mm -hmm. Port St. Lucie, and we're talking about anger and uh, talking about ways that we deal with it and then ways that we can become happy what may it what makes you happy uh it's a conversation that needs to to be to be made People all the time need to talk about this all stuff. the time and if, if folks will talk about this stuff that's the first step they need to you be know, reminded. talking about it talk it's, about it's it. not as bad as you think it is uh, and you can make it better yeah yeah. And I think, again, I think too many people ignore it when they see it. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you're not going to walk up to a stranger you do not know and say, hey, I, I noticed, you know, you have anger management up. problems. But, but if there's somebody, <laughs> if there's somebody that you know, someone you, you know, you, you can talk to, right. and you notice, you know, this person's been reacting they're, they're in certain ways. Yeah. Uh, you can you can talk to them and you can say, hey, I notice something, you know, can we talk about it? And let's sit down, let's find a quiet place and let's talk about it in, in a quiet way. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can get someone to recognize that there's a problem and there's a way to deal with it. When I was a uh, high schooler, 1968, and um, it was a couple of days after Dr. King was assassinated and uh, I... I swore I hated white people, hated them, hated them, hated them. Just, just, it just, that thing. And, and my mom, I, I wouldn't, I, I'd go to school, but I wouldn't do anything. My basketball coach, uh, the late Richard Peters, who happened to be a white man, but I loved him. And he, one day he just walked up to me and said, Mike, I know you're angry, but he said, Dr. King would want you to be strong. And from that day, it, it switched just the whole thing. You probably never thought of that. But, uh, no, I was too busy being angry. He oh. saw he saw that in you, he and he that. he knew yeah. he, he knew why you were angry. Right. Because I think it was it was uh, it, it was probably not very difficult to tell if someone changed overnight. Right. You can tell why. What was the reason that this person changed? Yeah. And then, of course, you can connect it to what happened last night. This mm -hmm. is what happened. Right. And today he's a different person. Yeah. That must have had some effect on that, him. So that every, was very it, good. I think about it all the time. Just the, that that one moment where he realized it's almost like all the planets aligned, everything mm -hmm. came together, mm -hmm. and then uh, and went on from there. And, and sure, and then you had a different perspective about yeah. people. Yes, you, you looked at people differently because everybody 
all races, all social classes, everybody do right things and wrong things. And, and you can't hate someone just because someone in their social class or racial class or ethnic class did something bad. Can't do that. Wow. I got, I got my mind all there you go. I, I, I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm <laughs> learning. But we're talking about anger. We're also talking about those things, those steps that can be taken to we're getting these issues relieve, out in the open, relieve people mm -hmm. of, of their anger. Uh, you have some additional things that we're almost. Wow. wow. Well, almost yeah, we're almost there. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I would say, if if you know of someone who is carrying some kind of anger situation, um, allow time for self-regulation mm -hmm. uh, give them time some time to think about their situation and try to make the corrections don't force it down their throats mm -hmm. because that can be a trigger for greater you know anger responses so uh, self-regulation is really important again if someone owns up to the fact that i am angry i know i'm angry and then if you can get them to maybe identify what the trigger is that causes them to be uh, in, in a state of heightened anger, uh, then you, you, you talk to them, you calm them down, and you give them some time to deal with it internally. Um, and you can say, look, think about it. Mm -hmm. These are the things I think you should think about. And then call me tomorrow and let's, let's talk because about it. Because it took them. More a while to be angry absolutely so you can't it, just snap not, your fingers it's not just going to go away it's just like automatically that. Yeah. yeah in the in, in dealing with their circumstance and and then uh, my basketball coach uh, mr peters when he told me that 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 boosted my confidence not only in my relationship with him mm -hmm. but my relationship with myself absolutely thinking that I'm going to have, yeah, I'm going to have to be a little tougher in life and I have to have a better understanding, but uh, got rid of all those triggers of sur uh, surrounding that circumstance and then knowing that I could move on from there. Amen. And that there was not something that was going to be hanging over my head. I Amen. loved it. I He's loved looking it. at the next minute. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but we got five left, though. We have five minutes left? Sure. Oh, I can. Uh, we can take it all. If we want tell my life story. And, <laughs> You're not uh, going to let things. Roxy back on? Before. Well, well, we don't want to get her angry. Oh, no, we don't. Okay. No. <laughs> you no. don't want to get the mama bear fired. No, no, no. We want to make sure that she is, uh, is happy about it. But I'll tell you what, I have a, a couple of uh, like public service public service announcements sure. uh, coming up on August the 1st. And this is for kids from one to 15 years old at the Mid Florida Event Center. There's going to be free haircuts, back to school, and and uh, also Care Bag, which is Roxy's dear baby heart. That's right. Uh, and Kicking It United. And they're also having a raffle off uh, $50 gas cards. It's going to be food and fun brought to you by the Children's Services, uh, Boys and Girls Club, uh, Two Men in a Truck, uh, also brought to you by A&G Pools. And uh, to volunteer, you can text HAIRCUT to 772-222-7399. And you'll uh, a, receive a digital sign-up form. And uh, that's just one of the many events. And also, Pastor, at your church. Yes, sir. They're having, uh, let's see, on Sunday, July the 31st. You can go ahead and talk about that. Oh, well, this is Cleveland Clinic in, uh, in, uh, in union with, joint with uh, CareBag. Mm -hmm. is offering a community health fair uh, this Sunday, July the 31st. It's the very last Sunday in this month, mm -hmm. and it's from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, what, what, what is your address? Uh, it's 4051 mm -hmm. Savona Boulevard, Southwest Savona Boulevard in Port St. Lucie, really? 34953. So it's right, uh, right north of Par Drive. Okay in on Savona Boulevard. PSL, PSL. So yes, so there's going to be pediatric pediatric health screenings, adult health screenings, sports physicals, HIV STD screenings, uh, raffle prizes. I know Rox, the Roxy Rox is big on giveaways. To, to, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so uh, bring bring your child, bring yourself, come out and uh, see the doctors from uh, Cleveland Clinic. And, and they'll be, and, they'll and be the, glad and the to key word you. The key word is it's free. It's free. You free don't need to bring your insurance cards. Yeah. 
Wow. Good thing, Cliff. We might have to go out there and get some freebies. At our age, we get, we probably should. <laughs> and you'll probably win a, a $50 gift card. Uh-oh. Or a $100 gift card. Wow. Know. We thank you all very, very much for having joined us. And uh, Pastor, Pastor Haynes, uh, thank you very much, sir, for sharing this time uh, with me, with us. Uh, Roxy, thank you very much for allowing us to uh, take up your airways and whatever it is that you're good. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever it is that you're doing, we uh, we hope that you will continue to do do well. And by the way, Mike, uh, yes. Roxy had great things to say about you. She said, oh, yeah. uh, he's, he's my mentor. He, <laughs> he taught me radio. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and, and there's people around here like uh, Mr. G on the morning show, our morning show. He yeah. has all kinds of good things to say about Thank you. Thank you very much. He's worked with you before, too. I yes, think. sir. Yes, sir. That's a good thing about us radio people. We stick together. There we go. We don't get angry at each other. No, oh, <laughs> no, no, no need. There. No need. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, the careology, the science of caring, it's also an art form. You got to get good at it. Let's get good at it. Let's uh, resolve all this anger. Okay. Yes, sir. By the way, this is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. You can visit givecarebag.com to see what you can do. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie.